Hello, and welcome to ETA Meeple Time, where we explain to you concepts that we think are valuable to understand with regards to voting and election data. If you've seen any of our work, you'll know that we here at ETA put out a lot of graphs. Graphs that can be things like scatter plots, bar charts, or histograms. We understand, though, that not everybody looks at graphs like these every day, so we want to try and make them a little less daunting by playing with Meeple. On top of that, many people are unfamiliar with what election data really looks like. Things like statements of the votes, or CVR data, and we would like to explain a bit more of that to you. It's unfortunately not all that uncommon to know virtually nothing about how the election process in one's area works, and we'd like to increase that knowledge. And right off the bat, a primary question is how do you go from voters to data? The ETA's work builds off of publications from three election integrity experts. Walter Mebin, Sergei Spilken, and Roman Udot. The latter two have lived in and primarily focused on Eastern Europe. However, they have been persecuted for that. Walter Mebin is US-based and previously worked with government entities such as USAID to actually write playbooks to identify election fraud in other countries that the US sought to previously help avoid fraudulent elections. Given that our work builds off of theirs, we look at metrics that they have shown indicate concerning election features. First off, we have vote count. Now, this is just how many votes were counted in a region, or how many votes were counted per candidate or ballot option. Next, we have vote share. For elections where you have multiple candidates or multiple ballot options, the percentage that a given candidate or option receives is its vote share. Lastly is turnout. Turnout is the percentage of eligible voters that cast a ballot within the given election. To get turnout, you need a couple of things. You need to know the number of registered voters in the given region that you are looking at. And then you also need the number of ballots cast. So, how do you define that region where your registered voters live? To what level do you break down the vote? So, everyone is familiar with the country in which they live, the country in which we elect some very high positions. Below that, of course, you have your state. And now, most people assume, or at least many, assume that much of the legislation guiding how elections should be handled comes at the federal level. That is not entirely necessarily so. The states, by and large, are where the legislation for elections takes place. And they generally determine how, within their state's boundaries, elections are handled. They prescribe lists for the machines, the software, and the procedures. And then, the entity that carries out those elections are the counties. Counties further legislate certain aspects of elections and make determinations on how to proceed based on the options that the states have provided. They can choose what software they use from that prescribed list that the state has provided, what tabulator and vote machine brands, and how they generally run the election, so long as it is within the list that the state has given. Now, counties subdivide themselves further into precincts. Precincts are essentially your neighborhood. So they can vary in size and number, and some states don't necessarily lock you to vote within the precinct in which you live. However, everyone has a precinct in which they live, and if your precinct is particularly dense, this region could be as small as just a few city blocks. If your precinct is a bit more spread out, 
it could be as big as an entire town. If your precinct is even more sparsely populated, such as an unincorporated area beyond city limits, you might just have a couple people. And then, of course, there are some precincts that simply have no voters. Now, how do you go, then, from precincts to turnout? Let's do a little demonstration with some meeple. Let's say we have a precinct, and for this demonstration, we'll keep it simple. We'll say that we only have red and blue occupants to this precinct, although that is generally not actually the case. Let's say we have 10 voters in a precinct, right? And the information that we want to get out of this precinct, just as a reminder, is the number of voters, which we have 10, and then we want the vote count or ballots cast. Vote counts and ballots can vary a little bit because there are such things as overvotes and undervotes, which we can explain later. But to avoid overcomplicating this one, we will just say that there are six people who voted and four who did not. Let's assume, just to make it simple, that everybody has voted along party lines here. So you have the red vote count is three, and the blue vote count is also three. So now for vote share. And please pardon my terrible handwriting. So for blue, we have three out of six. So that would be, of course, 50%, right? And for the red vote share, we also have 50%, or 3 out of 6. So on a graph, of course, if you were doing a scatter plot, you would have turnout along the bottom axis in a lot of our cases, and vote share here on the Y. And now, how do you get the turnout? So, of course, six people cast their votes out of ten, and that is 60%, right? 60% turnout. So, on the graph, that's going to be around here. And if you plot both candidates on the same graph, in this case, the dots will overlap. And in a two-party candidate system, they will always mirror each other. And that is how you get the typical data that we utilize for our charts and graphs. And this is how you get one data point for a vote share turnout scatter plot. We'll go over more of these charts in a future video, but please let us know if there's any questions that you want us to answer with Meeple. Thank you. Have a nice day.